Okay guys, so we're going to start chapter 6. Chapter 6 is all about inventory, um, inventory journal entries for inventories, and how to value inventories. So what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to take a look at the agenda, and it, it states that we're going to first talk about some background info on inventory, then we're, gonna, then we're going to move on to determining inventory qu quantity, uh, establishing ownership for inventory, uh, inventory valuation methods, uh, COGS and inventory COGS stands for cost of goods sold. Then we're going to move on to sales and sales returns and purchase and purchase returns. And I'll introduce you uh, to a couple of theories throughout this chapter and a few formulas and some journal entries. So in inventories, what are they? In the balance sheet, uh, of merchandising and manufacturing companies, companies that sell products, inventory is a very significant asset. It is one of those assets that is considered a current asset and it is also, uh, or short term assets, and it is also an asset that requires lots and lots of thought because usually after cash and accounts receivables, inventory is a huge amount, sometimes bigger than cash and um, uh, accounts receivables combined. Inventory can be divided into uh, three parts. Uh, think about a company that, that makes products, not sells products, a manufacturing company. They have things that they buy, they use those things to create products, and then they sell those things. So when they buy those things, they're called raw materials. And that's also a part of inventory. So all the metal, the wood, the lumber, anything that they buy, the plastic, that is considered raw materials. And then they use those materials to come up with finished goods. And those are also a component of inventory. What happens is, of course, as you know, balance sheet is at a certain date. At a certain point of time, you're always going to have products that are not fully used or fully made. So what will happen is you'll have work in progress uh, of those products. So you'll have raw materials, you'll have work in progress, and you'll have finished goods. I'm just introducing you to these three concepts. We're not going to use them in our journal entries, but eventually you will. In the income statement, uh, inventory becomes an expense because it is something you are selling. It is a special kind of an expense. It is called COGS, cost of goods sold. It is also called cost of sales by some companies. It is also called cost of, um, I guess, inventory or, or things of that nature that imply that these are things that you're selling. So uh, a lot of companies call it cost of sales because it's easier on the, on the tongue. So what happens is you have your uh, sales minus COGS or cost of goods sold which equals gross profit. Gross profit is extremely important because you want to be able to have that value in order for you to uh, have expenses and take, uh, the expenses have to be taken care of through gross profit so you have in that income. <clears throat> there are two methods of inventory, uh, of recording inventory. The one is called perpetual and the other is called periodic. Perpe in perpetual uh, uh, method of, uh, of recording uh, inventory journal entries, you would have to record a journal entry, an extra journal entry every time you sell a product. And this becomes cumbersome and what happens is most companies follow perpetual, in, sorry, most companies follow periodic and that's the method that we cover in this course. So if periodic, of course, there's a lag in, in inventory recording. Uh, you'll see how that works. However, it is much more efficient and it is better for companies to do this. <clears throat> so, how do we determine inventory quantities? There are three characteristics of inventories. The first one being that it is necessary to determine the number of units. So if without the number of units, you will not be able to come up with a value for inventory because you need the number of units and of course what each unit is worth. So we'll talk about the each unit worth later on. 
Then the second thing you need is to establish ownership status. So in order for you to have inventory, you must have ownership of the inventory. Otherwise, it's not yours. Otherwise, it belongs to someone else. And the last issue is about valuation method. So you have the number of units, but at what value per unit? So that's the valuation method. So those are three underlying factors of inventory. And you must understand that those are the three things that we'll talk about in this chapter. And those are the three important things um, that are uh, necessary to understand inventory. So you must take a physical count on inventory uh, at the end of the year and determine how much inventory do you actually have in your retail store, in your merchandising business, or in your um, manufacturing business, things or businesses that sell products. Um, I've added a slide here with regards to internal control procedures. Um, I ask you to read this on your own and we'll come back to this in the next chapter because in the next chapter we'll talk about frauds and how uh, internal controls are extremely necessary to prevent frauds. So moving on to establishing ownership. There are three ways or three terms of sales to establish ownership. I'm sure you've heard of some of these. You may not have heard of all of these. One of them is called FOB shipping point. As soon as the products are sold, the buyer has the ownership. So it is the buyer's responsibility to ensure the products and it is the buyer's responsibility to get the products to their workplace. It is not the seller's responsibility. And that is called FOB shipping point. The other is called the FOB destination point. This is where the buyer only has ownership once the products reach the workplace of the buyer. So if you can see the visual diagram in the next slide, you see that FOB shipping point uh, is when the seller has sold the products at that arrow. As soon as the seller sold the product, the buyer now has ownership. It is the buyer's responsibility to get those products uh, to their warehouse or to their place of work to ensure the products and so on. In the destination point, the buyer only has ownership when they are at their workplace. The third basis is called consignment basis. Ownership rests with the shipper until the product is sold to the customer. So the consignment basis just means that these uh, that, that owners of these products have asked you to, to have some space in your store or in your area of business to display these products. They do not belong to you because they are just on consignment. You have not paid for them. As the customer pays for the product, you become the owner for that product for a second and then you sell it to the customer. The actual owner of those products are the, sh the people who, uh, who have placed those products in your store. This happens a lot in retail and happens quite a lot in grocery stores. So just as an understanding of uh, the three bases of ownership. <clears throat> Lastly, uh, or the last couple of things that I want to cover today are journal entries and freight costs. So what happens is as for, uh, uh, with regards to journal entries when inventory is purchased. So as you can see, I've labeled the journal entries as one, two, three, and four. So let's see if this makes sense. So of course, before you actually are allowed to sell something, you want to be able to purchase the inventory, right? You want to have that inventory in your place of work. So you debit purchases and you credit cash or AP. So let's go with cash because you paid for it. So whatever the amount is, you debit purchases and you credit cash. Purchases is also a type of inventory account, which we'll talk about um, as we go along in this chapter, but it is a type of inventory account. Then inventory is sold. So you can see you debit cash because someone has paid you cash and you credit sales because it is your revenue. So in the first journal entry, you have purchased the product. In the second journal entry, you have sold the product. However, after the second journal entry, you still have not taken the product from 
balance sheet and put it on income statement as far as the expense is concerned. So what you do is at the end of the period, which can be a month, a quarter, or the year, any amount that is sold, all the amounts, all the purchases that were sold, you debit that to COGS, cost of goods sold, and you credit purchases because you have sold those purchases. So in the first transaction, you bought the purchases. In the second transaction, you just sold it to customers. In the third transaction, you're moving the products out of purchases and into COGS, which is an expense. And in the fourth transaction, any products that were not sold, you move them from purchases into inventory. So you can display it properly on your balance sheet. Okay? So what happens is all your purchase accounts must go down to zero. As long as they are zero at the end of the year, that means that either they are COGS, cost of goods sold, or they are inventory for balance sheet at the end of the year, which has not been sold. Okay? So the question now becomes, what numbers do we use? What value do we use for COGS and inventory at the end of the period? We'll talk about that in the, in the next half of the chapter. So lastly, just, I just want to cover today our freight costs. It is a completely different uh, thing, just on its own. Basically, it's saying that if the buyer is paying for uh, the uh, shipping of the products. Freight in is a type of expense. You can also call it shipping expense. You can call it, um, you know, something uh, along those lines. And you are obviously debiting that as an expense and crediting cash because you're paying for it. So uh, we'll stop it here. We'll come back to it uh, tomorrow. However, I just want to highlight once again this slide here. Uh, transactions number one two, three, four. So transaction one happens when you buy the products. Transaction two happens when you sell the products. Transactions three and four only happen at the end of the year. And that is basically to take, uh, to create, uh, sorry, to take everything out of purchases and put them either into COGS, which is an income statement account, or into inventory, which is a balance sheet account. Okay? So we'll stop it here for today.